Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In for review, we have a hot new product from Cord Electronics. Cord Electronics have just released the Hugo 2, the successor to the hugely successful Hugo, which actually changed the market. The Hugo was originally intended as a high-end portable device. However, many audiophiles adopted the Hugo into their systems as a standalone DAC. Cord have embraced that and the Hugo 2 is now a multi-purpose device with proper connections for the most part. However, that is not enough. Cord have really upped the ante with the Hugo 2 by hugely increasing its performance. Okay, let's talk about the design of the Hugo 2. Now, this is a really clean and nicely finished hi-fi product. For, for starters, we've got the expected clear see-through window, which we obviously have come to expect from, from Core DAX, but they've gone further. We've got nice kind of shapes and touches and finishing touches here with, with kind of recesses where our, our color buttons and control buttons sit. We've got a nice raised area there with, our, with, the, with the volume control, obviously for the headphone section and nice milding Hugo too. But it, obviously what you can't see is, is the finish and it's a, it's a nice, smooth, uh, very high quality finished product from Cord here. A unique design aspect of the Hugo too is the, is the use of the four color buttons. Now, if you look in the manual, initially that can be a very confusing thing, but it's actually a very simple and easy method of controlling the Hugo 2. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration. We'll turn it on. As you can see, it'll go through like a, like a startup process. And then we have our different options. And you know, as you go through the different options, you know, the buttons change to different colors. So <laughs> it seems like you need to remember 50 different colors for 50 different options. You won't. You'll know what you'll use and then you, you'll select what you use and you'll know what's being used by the colors because you'll recognize the colors that you normally have, i.e. red, yellow, white and blue or, or whatever it would be, obviously for your own individual setup. If we look at the connections, we can see Cord have given us some proper connections with the Hugo 2, which is very welcome. These feel quality and are well made and fit nicely in with the design. And I've had no issues using you know, big, chunky connectors on the end of cables with the Hugo 2. One thing to point out, if you're interested in using a coaxial input into the Hugo 2, then you'll need one of these. Now this is a Phono to 3.5 connector and you can buy one of these in Maplin's for about three pounds. Looking at the other side and the connections, we've got two inputs. One is for a USB input and the other is for power, uh, when you, obviously when you're charging the device. Both of those have a mini USB input. Now again, if you're already set up with cabling from a USB point of view uh, and you're using you know, the equivalent of a printer cable, you know, like a Type-B, a square uh, connector, don't panic because, again, Maplin, sell these that's about five pounds and that's a, a usb type b to micro type b adapter and that's exactly what you need okay there's one for me one snag of this design and it, it, it's, it's something that i don't think c c anything can be done with it because this is designed to be a portable device there's only so heavy it can be and it's actually reasonably heavy for a small device but when you use this device with big heavy cables they pull this around. Now, Cord can't win, in my eyes, in this situation. You can't have this too heavy because it's not portable, and if it, obviously if it's too light, then chunky cables are gonna pull it around. So that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, if you are using heavy, you know, heavy duty type cables, then you, know, you would need to think about where you're gonna place this. Okay, let's talk about one more thing. Now, this review is going to be for the DAC section uh, of, of the Hugo 2. However, a big part of the design of the Hugo 2 is the fact that it's portable. Now, I've seen in other reviews, people have said they don't think that it's portable, it's too big. However, m maybe I'm missing something, or I think maybe they're missing something. Now, you know, why does portable have to be, you know, stick it in your pocket and listen to it? For me, the design of this goes a little bit further than that. I mean, if you want a, a device that you can ch stick in your pocket for the daily commute, you know, it, it, you know, to and from work, then call to sell the Mojo for that. Now, for me, the portable aspect of the Hugo and the Hugo 2 
is kind of major, major travel. So for example, you know, a long haul flight or, you know, or, a, a, you know, a long train journey from one end of the country to the other. So in those instances, you, you, you're going to carry luggage, you're going to carry a bag. So something like this would be perfect. You could pull it out and have very high quality sound on the train or on the plane. I think the design fault goes even further than that. You know, businessmen that go away and stay in hotels for periods of time, you know, they can take this with them. They've got a laptop, they've got a, you know, a higher quality DAC and headphone amplifier, and they can have high quality music on the go. So portable to me doesn't necessarily mean stick it in your pocket, but portable means stick it in your bag, take it with you, take it with you abroad, take it with you on business, take it with you on the plane and you get high quality sound wherever you go and at the same time you can then come home and put it in your main hi-fi system and continue to use the product there so when you think about that as a unique design and the way that the Hugo really has changed the market there's not many products that can do that there's not many products that are that multifunctional where you use them in your main system and you use them on the go Okay, specification, now the big one with the Hugo 2 is the fact it uses the latest FPGA DAC chip. Now if you speak DAC, you will know that this has a 10 element pulse array design, which is a step up from the Hugo, which had a four element pulse array design. Also, this chip has nearly double the tap length. The Hugo had 26,000 odd tap length filters, and the Hugo 2 has 49 1,152 tap length filters. So in this case, more is better. However, THD figures on the Hugo 2 are down to 0.0001%. And in this instance, lower is clearly better. The Hugo 2 still uses the same internal batteries as the Hugo, which allows it to be powered off the grid. And playback is now seven hours off a full charge. Support has been improved as well. The Hugo 2 supports quad DSD. It has USB and coaxial inputs that support 32-bit, 768 kilohertz file size and an optical input that supports 192 stroke 24. It has also been updated to support aptX Bluetooth. The outputs are an improvement too. As previously mentioned, we now get full size phono connectors. One major change with the Hugo 2 is we now have for filters to choose from to tailor sound quality to our taste. In the case of cycling through the four modes using the filter button on the Hugo or using the remote control. Okay, the Hugo 2 is a bit of a pain to live with. In a sense, you need to charge it regularly. Now, lucky we live in a day and age where charging things is very much a regular occurrence. I'm sure everybody charges their mobile phones every day. A lot of people charge their watch every day. A lot of people charge their Kindles once every six months. So getting into the habit of charging the Hugo after every use is not really a big deal. However, that does come with a caveat. Now, it's a very small and easy to, to place design. However, you need to place it in a position that you can get easy access to it so that you can plug it in and unplug it for a, for a charge after use. You do also need to turn it on before using it. Unlike other DACs which are powered and left on all the time, obviously because of the batteries, it has an automatic shut off cycle. So you need to turn it on before every use. I can see some audio files having a sweat and a fit over the thought of doing that. The other thing to bear in mind is that is the control system via the four you know, LED type glowing buttons. Now, initially when you look at the manual, it's a very confusing affair and potentially could be off-putting. However, once you've actually got the device and once you've got the manual, it's actually very simple and very intuitive. And they've actually, the, doing the manual that way actually makes a lot of sense. To try and word the different settings for the device would have been a lot of words Whereas, you know, pictures and coloured pictures really tells a better story. Okay, let's talk about the sound quality of the Hugo 2. Now, we're going to start with the positives and there are quite a few positives to go through. So please bear with me. The first thing you notice from the Hugo 2 is the clarity from the presentation. 
in particular the mid-range clarity. We've come to expect a certain level of clarity from Chord's FPGA DAC range. However, the Hugo 2 takes that to another level. The mid-range is both resolved and cleaner at the same time, and it actually takes up less space within the sound stage. Now that is quite an odd thing to describe. So let, let me try and actually explain what I mean by that. Is Say for example, you've got a song with, with a big mid-range, you know, a London grammar song, for example. Now it's quite surprising when you listen to a DAC like this, just how much space around the mid-range there is when there's not so much overspill coming off of that mid-range. When the mid-range is cleaner and crisper and more well resolved, it allows other fine details to come through from the mix, which would otherwise be clouded by the overspill from the mid-range. You notice with this DAC more space allowed from kind of just behind the speakers or just behind the vocal out to the main listening position. There is more layering, and more detail that comes through from the music. Now that is really impressive and really nice to listen to. The second thing you notice is the timing from the Hugo 2. The timing from this DAC is excellent. The layering of the music is even more well defined and even clearer and crisper than we're used to. That leads us on to the next point, hearing things that we've not heard before. Now that is a very cliche thing isn't it to say you know for a, for a hi-fi reviewer for someone to say about a hi-fi product but that was totally true with the Hugo 2. Within the layering of the music and within the sound stage details were, were far more apparent than before. That made details come through that I'd not heard before in songs that I know very well. Now the details weren't massive and they wasn't mega but they was very noticeable and as very welcome. Okay, the next thing you notice with the Hugo 2 is, is just how more insightful the DAC is into the music. Now, I did the majority of my listening with the Hugo 2 in its mode 1, which is in its most incisive mode, and that mode actually sums up the presentation very well. Classical music really benefited from the incisive mode, a mode that allows detail to come through, you know, space within the mix, but each element within that space had more detail and was more focused and more crisp. Which leads us on to the next point, the resolution with the Hugo 2 is a step up from what we expect from core DAX. The elements of the soundstage pop more, they, they own the, their own space more, they're clearer and more pronounced than what you're used to. The resolution goes right through the frequency range from treble, right into the bass. Ultimately, the word I would use to describe the sound presentation from the Hugo 2 is focused. Very, very focused. You don't always realize how blurred something is until you listen to something with a greater resolution and a greater clarity, such as with the Hugo 2, and then it's very difficult to go back from it. Okay, a quick comment on the different filters and how they affect the sound. Now for me, the main strength of the Hugo 2 is its incisiveness, its clarity and its resolution and its precision. Now, as you filter through the modes, the sound gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And for me, unfortunately, those modes robbed the Hugo 2 of its main strength. And they wasn't for me, you know, those modes. So I, I did 99% of the listening in mode one, the incisive mode. Okay, I do have to report, for me, some negatives of the sound presentation with the Hugo 2. Now bear in mind, these are points based on DAX in general, not points based at DAX at this price point. But I wanna mention them too, because I think it's important. Now the first one to mention is the bass. Now the bass focus, the bass control, the bass precision, and the bass resolution with the Hugo 2 are absolutely fantastic. However, it felt to me like maybe the bottom octaves and the bottom foundation of the bass were missing with the Hugo 2. Now, other people with other systems, that might not be so. So bear that in mind. The second thing I noticed as a negative for the Hugo 2 is that it punished some content. It punished some Redbook CD content. 
for example, some songs from the, the new London Grammar album that I've actually listened to quite a lot recently. Now, some of those songs were really punished when listening via the Hugo 2. And as mentioned previously for a previous DAC from Chord, I think the Hugo 2 is going to have you searching for higher resolution files, for DSD files, you know, full PCM, 192-bit files, because they do sound significantly better through the Hugo 2. Okay, another one for me was the presentation. Now, I think this ties in with what I spoke to about the bass. Now, even though the mid-range was crisp and clean and fantastically well resolved, brilliant in that regard, with some music and some songs, the mid-range was just a bit too forward for me. And again, that ties in with kind of punishing some certain content. The sound just didn't feel fully balanced to me. And the last one to mention is the soundstage width and the general presence of the music. Now with the Hugo 2, the sound is extremely focused, as I mentioned. However, I am used to and I prefer a sound that has bigger in presence and wider in soundstage. That the focus from the Hugo 2 is very much speaker width and inwards. Loads of depth in the sound stage and the way the sound came out from the speakers to the main listening position is really impressive. However, I've heard other DACs also from the chord range do that on a much wider scale and have a much bigger presence of sound. And unfortunately, I found that missing from the Hugo 2. Conclusion. Okay. Chord electronics. You've done it again. You've managed to surprise me and impress me with a product at the same time. I must congratulate Accord. You've managed to bring us a better performing product than what we've had before and not at a stupid price point. The Hugo 2 is relatively affordable. Now, the Hugo 2 costs £1,800. So it's far from cheap. However, you get a lot of sound for your money. You may not get a lot of material, but you do get a lot of sound for your money. The Hugo 2 is very well specified, supporting very high quality DSD files and very high quality PCM files. And let's not forget one of its main features. It is portable. It can come with you. It can come with you on holiday. It can come with you on the plane. It can come with you on the train. And it can come with you in your pocket if you have a bloody big pocket. Having that ability to have a DAC within your system that can come with you on the go is very unique and something that shouldn't be overlooked. Even if you only use the Hugo once a year for a holiday, that is a bonus and a benefit from owning the product that you don't get from other DACs on the market. The other thing to applaud Cord for is the control system via the four buttons. Now, that's a very unique way of doing things and it is one of those systems that once you understand it and get your head around it, it is a really intuitive way of doing it. And let's not forget the sound quality for the Hugo 2. Now, for a lot of people, this is gonna be all the DAC they're ever going to want. And it's certainly a hard sound to come back from. That clarity and that precision is very difficult to go back from. Be warned. If you listen to the Hugo 2, be warned. However, I would say there's potentially a bit of system matching to go on here. Now, if you're running the system that's quite big and heavy in the base, then the Hugo 2 is probably perfect for you, the way it's going to control and crisp and tighten up your bass notes. You'll love this device. However, if you're running a leaner system or if you're struggling for bass output, then maybe, well, then definitely test the Hugo 2 before buying it. Factoring in, we do have options. We do have sound tailoring options, you know, with the filters that we can engage. However, for me anyway, the incisive mode really is where the strengths of the Hugo 2 shine. And this is a great sounding DAC, and Cord have really pushed the technology with the Hugo 2. They've been able to improve the sound quality from the same package. Bearing in mind, the strengths of this DAC are strong. The clarity and the precision you'll get from the Hugo 2 really is impressive. And for some people, that's going to be all they want and all they look for, that real incisive look into the music presentation. If you go and watch and listen to the demonstration videos for the Hugo 2 as part of the review, I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Follow that, there'll be a comparison video which will really demonstrate the benefits of it. However, for me personally, 
as I've mentioned, I, I like a sound with a bigger presence and a wider sound stage and a sound that potentially has a little bit more guts to it. However, the Hugo 2 has got me asking a very big question to myself. And it, the question started the minute I started the review. The question is, am I used to a sound with a lot of excess and fat on it? Is what I like actually correct? Or is what the Hugo 2 is doing actually correct? Okay then, so we need to give the Hugo 2 a rating. Now, bearing in mind we're only reviewing the DAC section of the Hugo 2, and the price point, £1,800, is at the lower end of the core range. It's half the price of the Hugo TT that we reviewed recently, and yet it's still been able to take the sound presentation to a place I've not had before. It's given me a resolution and a clarity and a level of detail within music, musical presentation that I've not experienced before. Now for that alone, the Hugo 2 gets a double thumbs up. And then top, on top of that, we have to factor in the fact that it's portable, the fact that it's really well equipped, and the fact that it's a headphone amplifier, all in one, and you get a lot of, for your money, you get a lot of sound, you get a lot of features, and you get a lot of flexibility for your money. And that leads you on to the next question, you know, the, the big question, would I buy the Hugo 2 with my own money? Now that is a very interesting one. The Hugo 2 has really impressed me in some regards. However, for, for DAC only, there's some parts of the presentation that are just missing for me, just missing. Considering pure budget, if our budget only just stretches to the Hugo 2 and looking at what else there is on the market, and other options, what I would get with the Hugo 2 and what is kind of rolled in with this very small package with the flexibility that we've mentioned, then really it should be a yes. Yes, I would buy the Hugo 2.